So onwards, forwards, and upwards. Well, let's find out what happened to the Cayman Islands as we move on to 2040 and 2050. Yes, hello there everybody, Dodgy Gamer here. Welcome back to the channel and welcome to the fourth and final episode of this new gen nation experiment in which I've taken 10 of the world's top youth academies and transferred them to the Cayman Islands so they produce new gens, regens, whatever you want to call them, hopefully some wonder kids of Cayman Island nationality and we see what effect it has on the national team. So last time we checked in on the Cayman Islands, it was 2030, and they just reached the World Cup for the first time. Unfortunately, they were knocked out in the group stage by England and Colombia, who did indeed contest the final. So let's have a look at today and see if they've been back to the World Cup final since. So we're looking here, first of all, of course, at 2040. We see they're up to 77th in the world, so um, we're still going up. We're still slowly making our way up. I mean, I don't think uh, we've been any higher than... Seven, there's been a 76th at some point. So this is about as high as we've been. 75th even, sorry. 75th. So we, it seems like it's plateaued um, over the last few years, though. If we take a quick look at the squad as it is, we see, um, if I just sort them by caps first, uh, we've got a couple of old hands in here. No one older than... The uh, Darwin Solomon is the most experienced player in the team at the moment. 92 caps, closing in on that century, uh, age 29. So a lot of those original players and a lot of the players who you guys kindly lent your names to have retired or moved on in some form or other. But again, we see when we look at the clubs, no one is really playing at the top club. Um, we've obviously got a couple of players here from Manchester United, Feyenoord and so on, but and Sporting B, but in general these guys are either going to the B teams, like Neville McLaughlin here, or they're moving on to smaller clubs within those leagues. Kelmar Scott, 22, he's in the Feyenoord team, but when we look here we see he just made one substitute appearance in the league last season, and one appearance, one substitute appearance in the Cup. But when we take a look at the player shortlist, you see now 418 players. So we've remained at a similar level to last time we checked in, in terms of number of players generated. But you see the problem we've had before is just getting worse. All of these top value players who've declared for England. I mean, look, we've got here um, Abijah Samuel, 35 years old now, 148 caps and five goals for England. And he's now at Barcelona. Oh, Abijah. Got another one here, Colin Seymour Solomon. 111 caps for England. 31 years old, so still got a few good seasons ahead of him. And he's playing in central defence at Manchester United. Matthew Cupid, 59 international goals for the now Barcelona player. And you see players here at top clubs in England, in Italy, in Spain, in Portugal. But all either turning out or declared for England. This kind of guy is frustrating. Elijah Ebanks wilson So he's at Benfica. He's 31 years old now. Um, valued at £42 million, but he's never played for England. He waited and waited and he never got capped. He could have played for Cayman Islands any time, but he chose not to. So while we have improved the Cayman Islands standing in world football and we have got them, well, we'll look at any further tournament appearances in a moment. It seems the real country that's benefited from this experiment is England. They've had some top talents. They've got here several players that have played several times for the national team. Now, I've done international management on Football Manager before. If you dig around in my channel a bit, you'll find my International Manager of Mystery series. And I know how these things work. You can try with these dual nationality players. Try to call them up. They might reject you. You can try to interact with them. I'm wondering if I managed the Cayman Islands using this database, I wonder if I'd be able to sway some of those players, the likes of Elasia Ebanks Wilson or... Ronaldo Ruiz, if I'd be able to sway them over to the Cayman Islands, dangle a Gold Cup or World Cup qualification in front of them. So what do you think? Let me know down in the comments below. Would you like to see that as a little mini-series on the channel? 
where I take over the Cayman Islands in this database and see if I can outdo what the AI has done here. And if you do like the sound of that idea, where should I start? Do you think I should start at the beginning in 2019? Do you think I should start a couple of years in where we've got some of the players that were generated, some of the players you guys named for me to pick? Or should I start at 2030, around the time we won the World Cup and see where we can go from there? Or today, we're going to skip ahead to 2050. Maybe I could start from there. Let me know down in the comments below. So would you like to see a series where I manage Cayman Islands using this database? And if so, where should I start? Right at the beginning, somewhere in the middle, or 2050? So we're going to quickly go through results. So after the World Cup, a series of friendlies and uh, mainly victories, a credible draw with USA as well. And then we see the next year, the Gold Cup. And again, it was quarterfinal. Look at that. They got through a fairly straightforward group, managed to get a win over Canada, finally. And then a penalty shootout loss to Trinidad and Tobago. That must have been sickening. So close to getting to the semi-final. Then Nations League that year as well, USA and Guatemala, so fairly tough group, got two wins over Guatemala, two defeats against the USA, so they stayed put. Then we get World Cup qualifying and friendlies the following year, easy, easy victory, 14-0 on aggregate over Anguilla, then 14-1 on aggregate over Barbados, and then a group with Jamaica, USA, Costa Rica, they got a win over Costa Rica and a draw against Costa Rica. But apart from that, not enough to qualify for the 2034 World Cup, sadly. They did also have another Gold Cup appearance. They got through the group, again falling at the quarterfinal stage. This time quite a heavy defeat, 5-1 to Mexico. A year of friendlies then in the World Cup year, unfortunately. Mainly wins, just a couple of draws. Credible draw there away to Slovenia. Then into 2035, disappointing Gold Cup, losing to Bermuda, Canada and Cuba, not scoring a single goal. Into the Nations League, Panama and Canada in the group. They beat Panama, lost to Canada and again stayed put. Then into another round, they all seem to get Anguilla in the World Cup qualifying. This time beat them 9-3. And then we got Bermuda, some, a measure of revenge over Bermuda. And then Honduras, Jamaica, Mexico, so a fairly tough group. Looks like, though, they managed to reach the playoffs, where they then, the intercontinental playoffs, they beat Saudi Arabia, but unfortunately fell in the last hurdle to Ecuador. But quite a year here for them, because not only did they nearly qualify for the World Cup, they also reached the semi-finals of the Gold Cup for the first time. So a bit of a resurgence. They got through their group. They beat Guatemala in the quarterfinal. And look at that, an extra time defeat to Mexico in the semi-final. Unlucky. So 2038, no World Cup. That meant friendlies only. And another World Cup in 2039. Sorry, Gold Cup. Gold Cup, rather. They got through the group stage. Mexico in the quarterfinals. How many times have we seen that now? Then Nations League, they got uh, two defeats against the USA. They took four points off Curaçao. I think I got that nailed. So again, they don't get relegated, but they don't get into the finals either. And just friendlies in the current year, 2040. Let's skip ahead to 2050 and see what else happened. Oh, but wait, before we do that, uh, there's one player of the players you guys named who's still active. And this was the one picked out by... S. Ben from Passion for FM. He named him Nadira Shaman. And here we see it, 35 years old. He's still in the database, but retired from international football now. 133 caps and 82 goals. And sp spent the rest of his career at Sydney FC after leaving Barcelona B. A long run at Sydney FC. Probably become something of a club legend there. For everyone else who named the player, I'm going to go back through and find out, you know, the last season they were active in the game, and I'll put those screenshots up for you in the Discord. Speaking of which, if you want to join the Discord, check out the link in the description. I put in there some extra details about my FC Andorra save and my experiments and get some community feedback. So a good place to hang out. So we've skipped ahead a decade to 2050, and we see the Cayman Islands are starting to drop down a bit, down to 81st in the world. Now, because I was skipping forward in five-year chunks at this point, I haven't added all of these guys yet to 
to the short list, but we see the most capped player in the present squad is 46 caps, Ian Welcome Elliot. Well, welcome, Elliot. He plays at Adelaide United currently down in the A-League, 46 caps and two goals. Where did he come from? Barcelona. Did play one game for Barcelona, rest of the time at Barcelona B, before following the Paul Wilson path, or the, you know, passion for FM path, and going down to the A-League. Highest valued player we've got in the squad at the moment, Andrew Frederick Charlie, currently at Sunderland, valued at 3.5 million. 40 caps and 11 goals for him playing in the championship. So he came through the Man United system, went to Hull, then Atalanta, another one of our youth academy clubs, um, and then to Sunderland. There's one interesting thing I noticed. Um, there were quite a few players who would leave one of our 10 clubs and move on to another one. Okay, this guy didn't do it directly, but there were cases of players, for example, leaving Benfica and going to Salzburg or leaving Manchester United and going to Maccabi Tel Aviv. And speaking of those clubs, one of the interesting things I noticed in tracking the players is that some of the clubs, Manchester United, the Dutch clubs, Atlanta, you know, the bigger clubs in the experiment, and um, Benfica as well, they tried to hold on to some of those players. They let them play. They let them go out on loan. They let them play in their B teams, their under-23 teams, and so on. But the smaller clubs involved, Salzburg and Maccabi Tel Aviv in particular, they just didn't hold on to those players much at all. Salzburg in particular, they were just releasing the Cayman Island players almost immediately and just buying in top Austrian players from uh, other teams. Maybe it's to do with the club vision and club culture. Okay, so moving on with results uh, over the last decade for the Cayman Islands, we see there was another Gold Cup appearance here, where they again quarterfinal, again eliminated by Mexico. This time, though, look at that in the World Cup qualifiers. They actually didn't have to play the first round of qualifying, but in the second round, they were beaten by Puerto Rico. Ouch. So friendlies in 2042 with no World Cup qualifiers to play. And then we come round to another cycle of the Gold Cup. And again, look at this. You know what to do. Quarterfinal. Eliminated by Mexico. Nations League, they got Mexico and El Salvador. They were able to beat El Salvador, but not Mexico. So they stayed in Division A. I think we see a pattern coming up here into 2045. Almost missed 2044. So uh, they're back in the first round of World Cup qualifiers. Beat Anguilla. Then beat Cuba in the second round. In the third round, though, Trinidad, Tobago, Honduras, Canada, only one point, so obviously didn't qualify there. And a pretty poor Gold Cup that year as well, two defeats and a draw. So um, a 100% record the following year, victories in friendlies. Into 2047, though, another disappointing Gold Cup, lost all their group games in the Nations League, beat Cuba, couldn't beat Canada stayed exactly where they were. Then the following year, 100% record again, including back-to-back uh, -back wins over the Bahamas in the World Cup qualifiers, then beating Curaçao. Then they managed to finally get back into the quarterfinals of the Gold Cup, defeated by Costa Rica there in extra time. And then no wins in the group stage of the World Cup qualifying. Lots of draws, but no wins so no world cup in 2050 so i think you can see we i think yeah we have reached an end point for the experiment it seems cayman islands as things stand can go no further they're st stuck in division a in the nations league they never make the final the, the final the semi-final finals they never get relegated Gold Cup, they're either eliminated in the group stage or the quarterfinals. And World Cup qualifying, they just had the playoffs one year. But apart from that, they haven't been back to the World Cup. So can I do better? That's the question I would like you to answer down in the comments. Just as a reminder, if you would like to see me do a series where I manage the Cayman Islands, let me know down in the comments section below. Also, let me know where you'd like me to start from. Should I start right here from 2050? Should I go back right to the start? Should I pick a point like 2025 or 2030 to take over the national team? Do let me know. I always appreciate your feedback. Also, thinking forward to another iteration of New Gen Nation in the future. I think, you know, the problem here was that second nationality and the best players declaring for England. So, what I need to do in the future, I think, is could be the same clubs, could be different clubs. We could choose other other clubs. I've got a few ideas for that that I'll discuss with you another time in another video. But I'm thinking, let's pick a nation, a small nation, 
where there isn't the second nationality issue. Now, we've done in Football Manager 2019, we did it with two Asian teams, Qatar and UAE. And this time we've done it with a North American team. So maybe we can pick an African or an Oceanic nation and try to take them to the top. So if you've got any suggestions for that as well, a potential nation for a future new gen nation experiment, let me know down there below. Indeed, would you like to see another version of a new gen nation? Let me know that down in the comments below. But for now, thank you very much for watching. Please do hit that like button and share the experiment, share the playlist, share the episodes, please. I think, you know, let's get this video, these videos a bit more attention and love on YouTube. But yes, do hit that like button if you've enjoyed today's video. Drop me a comment in response to those questions. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. I'm Dodgy Gamer, and I'll see you again soon in some other new gen nation.